Hi there. Welcome back to English for Specific Purposes on Telescope. We are your hosts. I'm Mr. Darrell. And I'm Ms. Tatia. And the topic of today's lesson is business. It's yeah. a very interesting topic. And we've talked about business um, uh, in the previous lessons, and I think that we are going to add some more interesting things to business, right? Oh, very exciting. Okay. But before we uh, move on to the lesson, we have to look at our agenda. What do we have on our agenda today, Mr. Terrell? Well, as you know, Ms. Tati, we often start off with an introduction where we have a short discussion about topics related to business. Then we'll move on to vocabulary, a list of words you'll need for uh, the world of business and for our reading text as well. From there, we'll go to the reading text itself, move on to the grammar section of today, and finish up with a summary and give out some homework. Very interesting. Modit chwani gakwatili skeg mas gadaw khedot, gakwatili daid gheba mtsire shi saulit, shem dek shewis saulit biznes tan da gaw shire bool sitgwebs, shem dek tsawi git khawt asewe biznes tan da gaw shire bool teks, amas mokreba grammatika, shem dek shewa jamem dga gwa tsuse dawa srub tsa shinyo dawa lepit. Ok, let's get started. Mr. Daryl, as the topic of today's lesson is business, I want to ask you, do you have any idea how to start business? Well, it's a very important question, of course. I think the main thing is you've got to see that there's a need that you can uh, provide a service for, first yeah, off. There's are. got to be that need. and You've got to do your research. You've got to make sure you know what you're going into. And, and I think that you, you need to have some innovative idea, right? Innovation, that's the name of the game in this modern world. You have to be innovative, you have to be uh, creative. inventive, creative. Yes, yeah, right. And what are the tips to make your business successful? Yes, you have an idea. You think that there, you, no, you have found out that there is need uh, for some kind of service or product. But just then, how can, what are the tips to make your business successful? I think uh, after that, it becomes a matter of organization. Organize your, uh, your resources, your, uh, how, much, how much capital, how much cash you have, and uh, what plan you can enact in the next week, month, year, couple of years to make this business you're work. right. I think that one of the most important things is to raise money, first of all, and you have to decide the sources, which source, from which source you can raise money. And I think that you need a very good team, motivated, hardworking, intelligent team. And perseverance is also very important because you might have some periods of downfall and you should not kind of mm, give up. And <laughs> have, you, have you ever tried to start a business? Yes, too. by the way, I tried some. I, I have tried it in my life and I'll talk about it later. Okay? Okay. okay. Well, now let's move on and uh, let's look at our first set of vocabulary. The first word we have is turnover. Turnover is a noun and in Georgian it is brunva. Okay, can you give us more details about the word, Mr. Daryl? Yeah, turnover is the amount of business or profit that you make within a certain specific amount of time. Okay. Turnover, it's a noun and in Georgian it is Brunva. And I have an example. The business has an annual turnover of 50,000 pounds. Good business. That's a good, good business. Now, what is the next word, Mr. Daryl? The next word is cash flow. Cash flow. Cash flow is a noun, and in Georgian it means puladi sachsrebis mozraoba. The money going into and out of business, is it right? Perfect, yeah. The amount of money moving in uh, and out of a business. Okay. And I have an example here. Small traders often have short-term cash flow problems. Mm -hmm. But if it is short-term uh, problem, then it's, then it's not so bad, right? Unless there's a crisis, and then that short-term yeah. can mean the make or break of oh, your business. Yeah. Okay. And what is the next word, Mr. Daryl? Uh, liability. Liability. Liability is a noun, and in Georgian it is a valdebuleba. Liability. And uh, can you give us more uh, information about the word? Yeah, a slightly negative word. Uh, it's the responsibility of a person or business or organization to pay or give up something of value. For example, debt is a liability, is it? Yeah. Okay. The business has liabilities of $5 million. Okay. 
and the next word is equity capital. It's a noun, and in Georgian it is saxio capital. So is it the amount of money that a business uh, uh, raise, uh, raises through sh selling its shares rather than borrowing money? You're right, uh, Ms. Tati. You are a business expert. Equity uh, capital is the capital, the amount of money that a company gets from sell selling rather than... So, uh, selling the shares. Yeah, selling rather the shares than borrowing. rather than borrowing from a bank or something. So, equity capital. It's a noun, and in Jordan it is saxio capital. And I have an example. Companies in the U.S. enjoy greater flexibility in raising new equity capital. Okay, and the next word is... Assets. Asset is a noun, and in Jordan it is active. So this is the property of the company, I think, which can be sold in, in case the company uh, just uh, comes across some kind of difficulty. Uh, yes, something valuable belonging to a person or a business uh, that can be used to pay debts. Okay, thank you very much. Assets. Assets. Uh, this is a, a noun. And in Georgian it is active. And here we have an example. A company's assets can consist of cash, investments, specialist knowledge, or copyright material. That's a very good point. So even knowledge can be an asset. Oh, of course. And I think that we have finished with the words and it's time to, uh, to practice. So we are going to see the definitions of words and we have to choose the right word for the definitions. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I will be the first. Okay. Here's your definition. The amount of business that a company does in a period of time. I know the word. It must be turnover. And I'm right. Yes, you are. Okay. And now it's your turn, Mr. Daryl. I will read the definition and you have to guess the word. So the responsibility of a person, business or organization to pay or give up something of value. It was something close to that. Yes, exactly. So uh, what's the word? The responsibility has got to be your liability. And you're right, Mr. Derry. Liability. Here is your next definition. The amount of money moving into and out of a business. So the amount of money moving into and out of business is cash flow. <laughs> Am I right? Let's check. Yes, you are right. And the next one, the definition, something valuable belonging to a person or organization that can be used for the payment of debts. And you mentioned that knowledge can also be this. So Ooh, what is it? Perfect. It's assets. It's got to be. Assets. And you're right. So something valuable belonging to a person or organization that can be used for payment of debts is called assets. Now the last one, a little bit. And <laughs> is it task for you? For for you, actually. Ah, for uh, me. I okay. Will read it for you. The capital that a company gets from selling shares rather than borrowing money is called equity capital. So equity capital is the capital that a company gets from selling shares rather than borrowing money. And I think that we have learned the words and we can move on. We have to read a text, but before reading a text, I think that we have uh, uh, to discuss something. Ms. Daryl, so if you, if you have a business, if you run a business, how, how can you control the quality of service or, yeah, service or goods there? How can you monitor the situation? The, this is, might be where human resources comes in and monitoring as well. You might want to have a, an organization in the company that monitors the quality of service that goes through. There are different ways to do that. Okay. Well, now before we read the text, let's learn some vocabulary which will help us to um, understand the text better. And the first word we have is survey. Survey is a noun and in Georgian it is gamuketwa. So, how would you define that word, Mr. Dario? Survey is some kind of uh, examination of behavior, uh, opinions, and so on, uh, usually by ma made by asking people questions. Okay. So, and which verb can be collocated with this uh, word? So, do survey or, or what do we usually, or carry out a survey? Carry out a survey, yes. And uh, you, can, you, you can even do surveys. Okay. 
So carry out a survey or do a survey. So survey is a noun and in Georgian it is gamogitwa. And so we have an example, a recent survey found that working women want better childcare and flexible hours. Mm -hmm. Important for yes. modern uh, workplaces. Yeah. Okay, and what is the next word, Mr. Gerald? Quality control, it's collocation, quality control. Quality control is a collocation, uh, and it's also a noun. And in uh, a Georgian it means charisris control, okay? Quality control. And this is you, when you monitor that the quality of products or good is, goods is good. Precisely, yeah. Uh, the process of looking at goods to make sure they are produced to a certain standard uh, and so that your uh, your brand is maintained. Okay. Quality control. It's a collocation and in Georgian it is Harisris control. And I have an example here. We make regular trips to overseas factories to ensure quality control. And what is the next word, Mr. Terrell? The next word is random. Random. Random is an adjective. And in uh, Georgian it is shemtrveviti. Okay, random. Can you give us more details about the word, Mr. Terrell? Yeah, something that happens or is done or is even chosen uh, by chance rather than by a plan. Okay, random. It's an adjective, and in Georgian it is shemtrovit. And I have an example here. The survey was carried out among a random sample of voters. Mm -hmm. So they were randomly chosen Correct. without any kind of preparation plan or, or plan. Okay. Yeah. Well, and the next word is? A mystery shopper. It's mystery shopper a noun. Mystery shopper is a noun, and in Georgian it means misty urim uh, and I think that we're going to find out more about mystery shoppers today. So can you give us definition of mystery shopper? Hmm, I'll give you a basic definition. Uh, this is a bit like a secret agent in the, in the world of retail. A shopper that comes into your store, if you own a store. Uh, however, he has a secret mission that you're not aware of. He's observing everything and he's, he's sort of monitoring things. Okay. So mystery shopper, a noun. And in Georgian it's translated as Misteurim Ritueli. And we have a, a good example here. Most supermarkets want mystery shoppers to critique each department and the staff's knowledge of what they are selling. Mm -hmm. So uh, one day, if you run a, a business, I recommend you to use this experience, okay, of hiring a mystery shopper. Mm -hmm. And we'll find out more about it today as yeah. well. Okay. And what is the next word, Mr. Terry? Uh, report. A report. It's a verb. Report. Report is a verb, and in Georgian it is informatsis mitodepa, muhsenepa. And how would you define that word, Mr. Daryl? This is what happens after the mystery shoppers are done with their task. They will make a report. They will report to their... Um, okay, maybe write a formal document, document. informing the... Yes, with the description uh, or information about what they were sent to look at for, okay. look out for. Report is a verb, and in Georgian it is Informatis mitsodepa, mohsenepa, and a good example here, we called the insurance company to report the theft. <laughs> and our next word is retail outlet. Retail outlet is a noun, and in Georgian it is translated as satsalo de magazia. So is it a shop that sells directly to the public? Mm -hmm, yes, In it small is. quantities, I think. In small com quantities, yeah, you might have uh, retail outlets all over town and uh, they are uh, quite popular. Okay. Retail outlets. It's a noun and in Georgian it is Satsalud Mowajre Magazia. And an example, their albums are only available online and not at any retail outlet. So they are not sold at uh, the shops, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that we have finished with the words. It's time to move on to uh, reading. Uh, today we're going to read a text about mystery shopping and find out how useful they are, okay, and how they can control the situation in the stores maybe or just in any organization. Mm, I'm very curious. Okay, mystery shopping. One of the challenges that all businesses face is quality control. For a business that manufactures goods, quality control may require 
particular stage in the production process where a random selection of the goods is examined. But what about businesses that provide service, such as stores and restaurants? One way of evaluating the quality of service is to ask customers about their experience through questionnaires. This is an important part of many businesses' customer service strategy. There are problems with this approach, though. Customer surveys often have a very low response rate, and those who respond are often only those ones who had a particular difficulty. While it can be useful to be aware of those issues, surveys alone may not give a full picture of the overall quality of service. Very good. So you gave a good uh, rundown of reasons why regular methods are not as effective as our mystery shopping method. Yes. Now, uh, let's look. Increasingly, businesses are using another method of assessing the service they provide. Mystery shoppers. Mystery shoppers pretend to be service users and then report on their experiences. As the name suggests, this might involve going into a retail outlet as a customer and buying something, often from a range of products that the business wants to check on. In a world where online shopping is easy to do and so common, stores need to be confident that they are offering a positive experience to the customer who visits their brick and mortar store. To assess this, the mystery shopper goes through the experience in the same way any other customer would, making notes on particular aspects such as time waiting in line or interactions with staff. Some mystery shoppers even wear hidden cameras to record their experiences. The mystery shopper produces a report which outlines the main positives and negatives of the experience. So interesting, right? And I think that this is quite a good way of uh, of checking how the um, how, what kind of service you are providing or your company. You know, it reminds me of like secret agent stuff, like yes. people pretending to be someone they're not, having hidden cameras in, yes, their, in their clothing. Yeah, it's very interesting. So businesses benefit from this approach in, in a number of ways. It should lead to a more balanced assessment of the average service user's experience rather than a picture that emphasizes those who have negative experiences. The positive aspects that are identified may lead to bonus payments for staff. Any negative aspects help a business to identify training needs so that staff performance can improve. Some businesses even employ mystery shoppers to visit competitors so they can see how their offer to the customer compares and act accordingly. Mm -hmm. So there are some positives that come out of this. The staff might get bonuses or they might get um, praise for their good service. Yes, you're right. Okay, I think that we have finished the text and it's time for um, the exercise. We will see the statement and we have to decide whether the statements are true or false based on the text, okay? So the first st statement is the following, Mr. Daryl. One problem with customer survey is that few people complete them. Do you remember in the first part of the text we, we talked about customer survey? So I do you remember, and that was one of the problems and one of the reasons why they wanted to bring in mystery shoppers. Uh, I think the answer for this is true. Mm, yes, you are right. This is true. And it's true because we read customer surveys often have a very low response rate and those who respond are often only the ones who had a particular difficulty. So the statement is true. Not statement reliable, true. yeah. The previous system, not reliable. That's why they use mystery shoppers. Okay. And now it's... Your turn. My turn. I'm going to read the sentence for you, and you can tell me if it's true or false. Yeah, uh, I'm ready. Mystery shoppers interview other customers about their experiences. I think that this is false, and this is false because they don't interview anybody because they are mystery <laughs> shoppers. They never tell anybody who they are, and that they go they go in the shop and behave as if they are ordinary customers. Can't okay? trust them. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I remember we read mystery shopper goes through the experience in the same way as any other customer would. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now the next statement is for you, Mr. Daryl. I will read it for you, and you have to decide whether it's true or false. Mystery shoppers never record their experience. But you mentioned a camera, do you remember? So? They have to, of course. Um, sometimes you have to uh, give proof of what you're reporting on. Yes, so the statement is, is false. false. 
and we are right. We read, some mystery shoppers even wear hidden cameras to record their experience. Very sneaky. <laughs> yes. And the next statement? Uh, here is yours. Yeah. Based on the assessment of a mystery shopper, businesses can give bonus payments to the staff. Yes, it's true. Uh, the positive aspect is that sometimes the shop assistants might get bonus for, for their like, uh, high performance. Mm -hmm. So like a re reward system. Yes, you're right. So the statement is true because the positive aspects that are identified may lead to bonus payments for staff. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have finished with a reading and it's time for grammar. What's the topic of today's grammar, Mr. Daryl? Today's topic, uh, Ms. Tathir, and you as well, is intensifier plus comparative combinations. Okay, so it means that when we are comparing two things, uh, sometimes we have to say how much the difference is, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether the difference is, is big or, 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 or little, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's find out how we can do it. Intensifiers are words and phrases that add emphasis or express varying degrees. For example, we can use the words like intensifiers like a bit, a little, slightly, much, far, even, a great deal, a lot, significantly. So they help to show how much the difference is. Mm, very useful, indeed. You can add intensifiers to comparative adjectives in order to express a degree of comparison. For example, the new ice cream shop will be even busier in the summer. That's an example. A uh, second example is this one. Building costs will be a great deal higher next year, so we should act now. So we know that they will be higher, but a great deal higher means that there will be great difference. And it's a bit of a crisis, we should act right away. Okay. And I think that we have to practice now and mm -hmm. we will see the words which are jumbled and we have to put them in the right order to make grammatically correct sentences. I know you enjoy these very much, so yes. why don't we start right. with you. And I'm ready. Here's the first example. Here are your words, much competitor, more than successful is this business, it's. Okay, I will start this sentence with um, this business. I know that I'm comparing uh, this business to its competitors. And I would say it like this. Uh, this business is much more successful than its competitor. Mm -hmm. So one is m much more successful than the other one. So one, you, okay? you've used the intensifier. Okay. And now it's your turn. I will read the words and you will put them in the right order. So the first word is from, cheaper, much, than, is not, purchasing, online, a shop, and buying. Now think carefully and put the words in the right order to make grammatically correct sense. Well, there's a, there's a word that gives us a clue, cheaper. It's indicating a comparison is being made. Yeah, right. So already from there, I can guess the form of the sentence. Mm -hmm. Now, it should be this, uh, Ms. Tatia. Online purchasing is not much cheaper than buying from a shop. And you're right, Mr. Daryl. And it's my turn. I'm waiting for my uh, words. Higher, another, the, great, are, prices. Deal, in shop, a, then, another, there. Oh, I have to sing a little bit because I have too many words here. Let me find, uh, um, find the subject and I would start the sentence with the prices, then a verb, are a great deal higher there than in another shop. Oh, so I managed. Sounds perfect to me. <laughs> okay, well, and I think that we have finished and it's time to wrap up the lesson. So uh, what did we do today? We had a look at a lot of uh, vocabulary words connected to business and from there we went on to the reading about mystery shoppers and we looked at grammar which were intensifiers and comparative combinations. Mm, it was very interesting and I think it's time for homework Mr. Terrell. And what is the homework? Well, uh, we would like you to write a paragraph describing a successful business. Oh, it's so interesting. Maybe we can get some tips <laughs> also. 
Yeah. Okay, and where can the homework be uploaded, Mr. Uh, it can be uploaded to the address you see on the screen, and you might find sample answers there as well. Really? So interesting. Okay, and I think that the only thing we have to do is say goodbye to the audience today and uh, look forward to the next lesson, right? Yes, indeed. I was, it was great going through business discussions with you. Yeah, I didn't so even like know it. that you had past experience in business. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about it later, <laughs> okay? Well, so stay with us and keep on learning. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.